Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily for Tuesday, the 14th of May. I'm Peter DiLorenzo, the auto extremist, filling in for John while he's out driving the new Kia Cadenza. Let's get to today's top stories. Medium and heavy duty trucks recorded their first sales gain in the U.S. this year. According to Ward's Auto, big truck sales were up 1.5% in April compared to a year ago. However, so far in 2013, heavy duty truck sales are down over 14% in the American market. Hopefully April sales gain is a sign big trucks are picking back up because it's a good indicator of where the economy is heading. And speaking of big trucks, the European Commission just approved a deal to allow Volvo Trucks to acquire a 45% stake in Dongfeng Motors Truck Division. The $900 million deal will make Volvo and Dongfeng the world's largest truck maker, ahead of the current leader, Daimler. And sticking with China for the moment, Beijing Automotive just hired former Mercedes-Benz designer Peter Ardiketa Payne. The Australian helped create the CL, CLS, and M-Class models. BAIC is getting serious about design, as you may remember. Last year, the company hired former Ferrari designer Leonardo Fioravante as its chief of design. Do you realize that Honda could get rid of over half of its lineup in the American market and sales would not go down that much? Get this, only five models account for 93% of all the sales at Honda. That includes the Accord, Civic, CRV, the Odyssey, and Pilot. Meanwhile, the Crosstour, CRZ, FCX, the Fit, Insight, and Ridgeline really don't contribute much. The FCX, which is a fuel cell car, represents really good PR, even though they've only sold two of them this year. The Fit gets lots of accolades from the enthusiast media, so I understand why they have that one too. Here's our Autoline Insight. Those other models don't contribute much at all. Honda has some of the best core products in the business and should put all of its efforts into selling them. And in other Honda news, the Acura ILX receives a few upgrades for 2014. It now comes standard with 17-inch alloy wheels, leather seats, heated front seats, a rear view camera, plus a new audio system. Its starting price is now $26,900, which is up one grand compared to last year. The 2014 ILX is on sale now. It appears that Facebook is close to purchasing social mapping and traffic app maker Waze. The deal will cost Facebook somewhere in the range of $800 million to $1 billion for the app maker, which currently boasts over 47 million active users. Sources say the deal will happen, but there is one remaining hurdle to clear, whether Waze will stay stationed in Israel or move to the U.S. Facebook has previously purchased two companies based in Israel, both of which were moved to the U.S. Coming up next, my thoughts on the real value of chief marketing officers. From the, hey Martha, let's break out the scotch file, comes word that the average tenure for chief marketing officers in corporate America has gone up from 23 months to an average of 45 months, according to research conducted by executive search firm Spencer Stewart. Now this wasn't broken out to reflect the automobile industry, but it's worth noting nonetheless. Does this mean that corporate CEOs are finally understanding the value of a dialed-in CMO who can affect an image of a company in a most positive way? Could be. Then again, it could mean that this spike in the average tenure for big-time chief marketing officers is but a temporary aberration and that the revolving door for CMOs is due to fire up shortly. Because when things go well, chief marketing officers get their due, at least for the most part, although many CEOs don't like to share any of the credit. But when things don't go well, CMOs usually get shown the door. Why? It's much easier to blame things on a chief marketing officer when things look a little shaky than it is to actually stick with a reasoned, nuanced, long-term strategic marketing plan that has real value for the future of a company. In short, image is absolutely everything these days until a CEO decides that it isn't somehow, which means that corporate image wrangling on a grand scale is a high wire act with no net. 
And in this instant gratification world we live in today, I would recommend that CMOs should always have a bag packed and sleep with one eye open. And that's the High Octane Truth for Tuesday, May 14th, 2013. But before I go, I want to remind you to watch AutoLine After Hours this Thursday. My guest will be Jordan Lee, the head honcho of GM's small block engines. So tune in for the best insider discussion in the industry this Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time at AutoLine.tv. And that's it for today's show. Once again, I'm Peter DiLorenzo, the auto extremist. Thanks for watching, and I will see you again tomorrow.